Bro Cam here. What is Otard? Let's talk about it. So I recently got an HOA buster and that got me to thinking that uh, a lot of people f have this uh, idea that uh, OTARD will uh, protect you from HOAs telling you that you cannot put an antenna up. Uh, so let's start by talking about what is OTARD. The over the air reception devices rule. Uh, it was enacted in 1996 as part of the uh, Telecommunications Act. And it was concerning governmental and non-governmental restrictions on viewers' ability to receive video programming signals from direct broadband broadcast satellites, broadband radio service providers, uh, and television broadcast stations. It prohibits, this rule prohibits restrictions that impair the installation, maintenance, use, of antennas used to receive video programming and certain antennas used to receive or transmit fixed wireless signals. I'll ask you to remember fixed wireless signals. The rule applies to certain antennas, including direct to home satellite dishes that are less than one meter in diameter of any size uh, or of any size in Alaska, TV antennas, wireless cables, and certain fixed wireless antennas. This rule prohibits most restrictions that one unreasonably delay or prevent installation maintenance or use and two unreasonably increase the cost of installation maintenance or use or three preclude reception of an acceptable quality signal. So if we look down here, there's some amendments and I would encourage you to uh, check the links in the description. I will have all these links down there so you can read them too. Uh, I've, highly encourage that so you know that your your rights and your protections uh if you're somebody that lives in an hoa as mo a lot of us are now uh it's kind of hard to find up somewhere that's not in an hoa but we're going to uh scroll past all of this because they have a nice q a down here that's really uh written in nice plain english so what types of antennas are covered by this rule it applies to the following antennas dish antennas um, it is, it applies to antennas that is one meter or less or in diameter or diagonal measurement and is designed to receive video services via broadband radio service or receive or transmit fixed wireless signals other than via satellite, including a hub or relay antenna that is used to receive uh, or transmit fixed wireless signals that are not classified as telecommunication services. It also, uh, allows uh, da, 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 our co uh, covers antennas that are designed to receive local television broadcast signals. So we have that wording again, fixed wireless service or fixed wireless signals. So what is fixed wireless signals? Well, they tell us fixed wireless signals are any commercial non-broadcast communication signals transmitted via wireless technology to and or from a fixed customer location. Examples include wireless signals used to provide telephone service or high speed internet access to a fixed location. So I believe that this right here would cover like cellular internet. Um, and then we have this definition does not include among other things. So this isn't even all of them. This is just some of the big ones. AM FM radio. Amateur ham radio. So that's exactly what we're talking about, but it tells us to check out 47 CFR section 9715. Uh, it does not include uh, CB radio. It does not include digital audio radio services signals. So we see right here that OTAR does not cover ham radio. Whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent, they have it right here on the FCC site that this is. Uh, not covering amateur radio, but it is saying to, but see 47 CFR section 9715. So let's take a look at that. The code of federal regulations, CFR. Let's scroll on down here. 9715 station antenna structures. I'm going to boil it down for you. A 
is for really tall towers. C is for the 2200 and the 630 meter band. Uh, B is uh, stating that state and local regulation of an antenna structure must uh, not preclude amateur service communications. It must reasonably accommodate such communications and must constitute minimum practical regulation to accomplish the state or local authorities uh, legitimate purpose. I believe a lot of people conflate state or local authority to mean HOAs and uh, CCNRs. It does not. Uh, it is strictly referring to government entities. It's referring to your state. It's referring to your, uh, your county, your city, uh, your township. That is what it's referring to. So if we see here, CPRB1, 101 SEC 2D 952 1985 for more details. Let's go look at that. I am not going to read all this on video because there's a lot here. Uh, and this uh, precludes or precedes the uh, 1996 OTARD rule. So I believe this is what actually kind of led to the OTARD rule was all of these uh, local ordinances and restrictive supporting and opposing comments. I think it all boiled down to like, Hey, this is what we're going to do. Uh, so I, I know that the OTARD rule was more to promote television services becoming better and cheaper and more streamlined uh, and more accessible. But uh, I would encourage you to go ahead and just read this. It's it's It looks like it's long because it's a bunch of this stuff, but it's not that long. It's just too long for me to read on video. So it's not that long. Uh, but if we look at PRB1 1985, we will see that there's also... PRB1 2001. Well, let's go take a look at that. Could you see that there? Yeah, PRB1 2001. Okay. PRB1 2001. Uh, this is the AWR request review of the 2000 decision. So there was something even in this reconsideration decision down here. Uh, but we don't need to go into that because it's all laid out right here. So we go to section three. Specifically, ARRL requests that we expand the commission's limited preemption policy for antennas and antenna support structures used in the amateur radio services to include covenants, conditions, and restrictions, CCNRs, contained in deeds, bylaws of homeowners associations, HOAs, or regulation of architectural committee, control committee, ACCs. So that is saying, hey, we, the ARRL, are petitioning to have CCNRs, HOAs, and ACCs included in OTARD. And uh, we can see on the very next sentence, based on the record in this proceeding, we find no basis to reverse the Bureau's decision. Uh, according to ARRL's application for, application for review is denied. So they said, sorry, we can't do that. Um, whether you agree with that or not, I, on one hand, hate it because I generally have a general dislike of HOAs. The HOA, HOA I'm in now is pretty good. Um, we really only take care of a lake and throw block parties. We don't, we don't come at people for the color of their shed. You know, uh, I have lived in an HOA where, you know, they've come at people for, uh, for satellite dishes, which is included in an OTARD. And we had to, kind of put them in their place about, Hey, you know, federally we're allowed to have this and you can't tell us we can't, uh, they have come for people based on where they put their garbage cans and the color and height of their fence. So it kind of depends on the HOA you're in. Um, I would suggest kind of becoming friends or befriending some of these, uh, these directors and these HOAs and maybe slowly introduce them into the world of amateur radio and say like, look at all these cool things we can do. There's a great service we can offer, uh, in times of need or in times just at any time we can offer these great services. So, uh, so this is straight from the SEC and, uh, there is some stuff from the ARRL we can check out. This is the ARRL's PRB one package. And this kind of lays out in even plainer English kind of exactly what we just read. So basically we're faced with uh, two different types of antenna restrictions, local government zoning ordinances, covenants, 
conditions and restrictions, CCNRs. So in here, they are con they're just com kind of combining HOAs, ACCs, and CCNRs into one. They all boil down to about the same thing, covenants, conditions, and restrictions. Usually HOAs, their bylaws are even called CCNRs. These two, these two types of restrictions must be dealt with separately. PRB1 was not intended to cover CCNRs, but it was intended to give local zoning authorities guidance in enacting and enforcing their ordinances. Uh, so uh, we can check this link if we're faced with covenants and CCNRs. So let's go check that out. And here we see that really the, all the ARRL is giving you advice on how to, or suggestions, I shouldn't say the word advice, uh, but suggestions on how you can deal with your uh, HOA or CCNR. So many amateurs are faced with highly restrictive antenna covenants. These tell you what color you can paint your house, for example, and that they will come after you too. If you paint it the wrong color and uh, you, you know, they don't approve it and you can't get them to approve it, then guess what? They're going to fine you and make your life a living hell until you get it repainted at your cost. Uh, it may be possible to have the local government when they are rewriting the residential development standards for CCNRs to accommodate amateurs. Note, this would only apply to covenants signed by the buyer after the residential development standard is in ordinance have been changed. Meaning that if you've signed this and then they later on um, add this uh, um, accommodation for amateurs, you don't get grandfathered in or your grandfather than rather your grandfather into not having these accommodations that kind of sucks but just so you understand how it all works so will the homeowners association approve a modest antenna if yes fly under the radar erect an antenna to their specifics follow the letter of their law operate low power don't blast 1600 watts into jim bob's living room when he's trying to watch the prices right uh, if no, make a presentation before the homeowners association, emphasize the public service, which I think is very important and address concerns about RFI and aesthetics. That's also another one. The big thing with a lot of the HOAs is I actually don't think it's the RFI. I think they will, they will say the RFI just because they don't want it. And they try to make that a bigger, like boogeyman than it is. Uh, I think they really care about the aesthetics. They don't want you know, if somebody across the street is trying to sell their house and somebody shows up and they're like, oh, whoa, why has that guy got a big antenna on his roof? You know, what's he doing? Is that messing with my, my cell phone right now? Is that why we're in a dead zone? Like, it, it's just another thing that they can kind of throw on top and say like, hey, uh, we don't want this RFI issue that we have on top of the aesthetic issue. So, uh, and let's see that note. In plain English here, PRB1 does not currently cover covenant or private land use regulations. Why may covenants, let's scroll down here, have no limitations on small DBS dishes and TV antennas, but carry limitations for amateur services. So this is exactly talking about why OTARD was uh, created and why it includes what it includes. So private land use regulation of amateur antennas is not preempted by the Telecommunications Act of 1996. That is the act that contains OTARD. Uh, but most private land use uh, regulations of DBS dishes and D TV antennas is. This is because Congress was interested in promoting competition and thus lowering costs and improving service and video delivery services. That legislation had nothing to do with amateur radio. And here we see that the ARRL is saying, hey, give us some money because we're trying to get this added. So uh, yeah, they're working to extend the protection to amateurs, which I don't know how they do that. So on one hand, I just dis generally dislike the HOA because uh, there's a lot of overreach that I've experienced and I've, I've seen firsthand. On the other hand, uh, if the FCC does this, that's a lot of government overreach. Now the government is telling that these uh, private entities can and can't do with their land, which they already do already. But it's just one more thing that I think that's kind of why they're scared to do it is they don't want the people to be crying government overreach because the HOAs have a lot of money behind them. And I think sometimes that's more money than what the ARRL has. I think it's vastly more. Uh, so yeah, watch for the news sources to help the effort 
uh, visit the legislative action information area here. So let's check it out. Actually, I actually haven't been here yet. Okay, so this is just our federal legislative activity page. Uh, so go check that out if you want. Um, like I said, links to all this stuff will be in here. Uh, if you're in an HOA and you are concerned, if you're in an HOA and you're concerned that you will not be allowed to put an antenna up, there are solutions. Uh, I would recommend checking out the HOA, HOA ham on YouTube. It is, I think it's Bob KD4 BMG, uh, uh, Kilo Delta Four Bravo Mike Golf. Uh, and he is, uh, he does all of his operating within his HOA within their rules. So he's got uh, a stealth antenna that hooks up to a flagpole, uh, cause flagpoles are, I think, uh, I think they're allowed by, I don't think the HOAs can, uh, you're allowed to have one. And I don't know. I think that it's like the height or something that they can regulate. Uh, so he's got a really slick setup. I really like that. He's also done things where he's taken like a strand of like uh, decorative lights because he's allowed to have decorative lights up year round and he's modified that into an antenna. Uh, and he just kind of works on all these really inventive solutions. He's uh, another thing you can do is have a, um, an attic antenna. Uh, you can have your own gutter antenna like I have, you know, you can, it doesn't have to be an HOA buster. If you want to try to tackle building the matching network yourself, you can, you can do that. People do that all the time and it's a lot cheaper. Uh, uh, and another solution is just operate temporarily backyard portable. I did that for years. I still do it. Sometimes I go outside. I take my set my stuff up. It's like a poda in the backyard. It's like when you were a kid and you went camping in the backyard. It's, it's exactly what it is. So go set up in the backyard and when you're done, take it down. It's on a permanent structure. The HOA cannot fault you or cite you for it. So, um, and then lastly, what, another thing you could do is, uh, have like an infant halfway for a random wire and just like string it stealthily up to your, uh, to your tree. You know, if you get a thin wire, don't get a big bright neon, like speaker wire. Like I had at one point, it was really easy to see. You can get here. Some, uh, Ben tech go is this 20 gauge I think you can get even, even thinner, like 26 gauge. And, uh, this will, I mean, if you string this up, this will just disappear into the background. Nobody will be able to see this. So, and if they do, you just pull it down. It's just a piece of wire. So there are solutions, but I would start with, if you're concerned about it, checking out HOA ham, he is. Uh, uh, he has a lot of great inspiration for how to deal with this, uh, and working within the confines of your HOA. Well, that is about all I have time for today. This is the broke ham 73.